So everybody's ready? Um, anyway, uh, I've got... Uh, okay, my presentation. Uh, it's about Tempted Zoom. It's a modern HTML and IDF engine I wrote in the last few months. Uh, I was working with the printer change. It's an e-commerce uh, server built on Perl. It's also open source. And it has a very debating language, which is kind of uh, awkward to use. So <laughs> I looked around for other solutions. You probably know of uh, Template Toolkit. And there are a lot of uh, template engines for Perl already. So I would like to let you know what I, I come up with another one. The main goal of mine is the separation of web design and programming. I often get projects, so I'm a single developer and I don't make any web design. So most of the time, either the customer or other companies is giving me the web design, and then I put it into my project and have to put all the templating stuff in it. And usually, something is wrong with the design, so it goes back to the designer. The designer changes it, and I have to put the changes my my, my code basically, which costs a lot of time, and I would like to avoid that. So as I said, there are a lot of uh, template engines available right now. But each of them violates the principle of uh, separation of the web design and programming. So for, for instance, template toolkit, it has kind of a mini language inside it, with the square brackets. All the other ones are just uh, inline code the page, which are producing the HTML, and the newest thing was, which was developed last year is HTML soon from Matt Raut. I liked it a lot, but the problem with HTML zoom is it puts the CSS selectors in the code. So if you change uh, something in the HTML, like using different classes or that, you have to also change the code. And I thought this was really a disadvantage of patients. Okay, so I thought about, uh, about solutions. And this was the reason I started with template zoom. Basically, just started off with HMS zoom, and then I had some new ideas about it. So first of all, you really have a static HTML file. There's no mini language in it, so no inline code. It's just a static HTML file. It comes with CSS, of course, so it's glasses or ideas inside. And you can get into it and see uh, this might be a list or something where I put some value into it. And my connection I made to the programming code is a specification file. So this says, oh, here you have to put um, the name, or here you have a, here's a list. And it works with uh, also classes and ideas. So, so I will show it in a minute. Okay. What are the firmer goals? I want to make it more flexible. It's just a just a work in progress. I started like a few months ago. I have a couple of projects where it's already used. But I want to develop the firmware to uh, use as real, uh, as real a template engine for interchange. I do this uh, XML trick as, as backend for parsing this HTML and stuff and working for all the classes and going to the different uh, HTML tags and use attributes and all that. So another goal is uh, to allow it easy to tweak this HTML tree. I mean, still it's a HTML file and specification file, so it's not as flexible as, as could be. So if you are you build the tree from the HTML and then you fill in your values, then you might to shift things around or whatever, or hide something or I don't know. There are many possibilities, and I would make it easy to tweak it just through tree manipulation. This uh, XML tree. 
Yeah. And you said the three manipulation is in DOM, right? That's not real DOM because it's just. Uh, it's not the HTML you know, tree module that you're using? No, it's not a trick. No, it's not. Okay. So it builds up a tree of all oh, the elements. Okay. It's not really DOM because it has no commands like that, right. but you can use XPath on it. Right. To make to look, look at fixed in the document, and then you can uh, change attributes and all that. Okay. First, I have an example for you. It's uh, I mean, it's I'm using e-commerce, so with, uh, shopping carts is really, really an example. So I have a uh, area of hash labs which presents shopping cart of customer. So there are two books in it, with ISBN title and so on. And then I have my basic HTML template. <coughs> then I have uh, more or less here's the, the card where I look over the card items and on the bottom is the cost, so the total cost of the card. So the solution which are already there, like an interchange, I have a item list tag that just loops over the content and produces all the items. And at the bottom there's total cost, it shows the total cost of the card. Okay. So you see that is a mini language and it's hard for the HTML designer to manipulate it without knowing how it's going. And you can screw it up and or you change just the HTML and I have to put it into that. Yeah. Template toolkit is very much similar. It also uses the brackets, but I mean, it's also loop for each. That's it. And then uh, Metal come up with HTML soon, which I very much like from the idea of it. Uh, I said one problem is, is you have to put the classes in your programming code. And the other thing, it's really hard to read. And this example don't even work. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I try to, I try to uh, make it according to the documentation, and then I found out that doesn't work. So yeah, maybe I just stupid, but no, no, no. So whatever. That's not not easy to read and easy to use. So say the typical template columns are this, this is mini image inside and also you have to think up of the unit pages. So like it looks very nice if the designer gives you. But in the real world you have products with a long title or long description or whatever. And then you get the design screwed up. And often also no one thinks about things like uh, empty card or error messages and all that which are happening in the dynamic application and the port to present this equally well. Okay. So as I said I am in addition to this HTML template I have a specification file. And also I want to abstract the the data thing at the programming part a little more. So it's not like I having a database table or a hash or whatever. For most things, I either have values as simple variables or which you often have are just lists. So I I I have iterators. It's just iterator or whatever data they get. And this abstraction kind of helps to make things easier. So this is a specification file. I'm, I start with XML because I use it a lot. Um, I know that not, not many people, especially in Perl, would like it. So I have a solution for you as well. But it's basically easy. It says uh, you have this list of uh, items in the card, and I say the class is card item, that's a connection to my HTML, and then I say which, like which fields I have or parameters, and that is the name, quantity, and price. 
Um, so I can even tweak it a little bit. Like the first one, the part of name is in the card hash, which, which I showed to you. It's a, in the title, there's a title key. So I can, I can swap this around. And uh, this simple example is just like if the palm is named name, it looks for the class name in the HTML template. So it helps to keep this down. I mean, what would have really small files. And then outside list is just the value that's the cows, it's the total cows which are on, on the bottom of the card. So what I did yesterday, uh, I did a different module inside of the Intent Zoom which uses config scope. So that's a more approach, it's more likely better readable than XML. And so it's quite a lot the same. I have the list and then the parameter and the value. And it took me just, I don't know, two hours or three hours to write it, at most. So if you like a specific configuration language or configuration module, uh, you can either ask me for it or buy it on your own. It's not, it's not really much code in it. So to uh, pass this file and create a specification object which is used inside of of Okay. So for this simple example, the Perl script I'm using is also really simple. I first set up the cards. This is the hash I, uh, the array of hash refs which I showed in the beginning. And then you have out, uh, an upper hash. It's called values where we put the code in it. So I just uh, create the template zoom object by saying, it, oh, there's a specification file. There's a template file, and there's my iterator. So if I have more than one list in my HTML template, I can of course have more iterators. And the name of the iterator card connects to this name in the specification file. Okay, and then I just say zoom process, and it gives me the HTML. Okay. So. Some assumptions I had along the way, ideas about a business plan. Um, really, kind of like an application at work. I mean, what was one way of trying and seeing or not with this thing? Where can it go? So to prove it works, really in practice. Programming issues. What are the decisions I had to make? What was the time? I'm going to my directory. Endeavor. What were those? And if someone who wants to do it in Perl, what are the things? Suppose I show the HTML. So it's a little bit blown up so you can see it better on the screen. Okay. So now I'm running my script. And you see it has both of the both tiles in it. Yeah, it's very easy with it for this simple example. So, I mean, we don't do the XML specification, but in our one, it doesn't change as much. You still say that there are specification files, and then you say the specification files are scoped, so it looks up template zoom config scoped. Oh. Um, it's a specification scope and there's object and that's it. Or you can also specify the whole class name if it's not inside of templates. So you need a, a specification for every for one for each HTML. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean you could uh, Use a huge specification file for anything in your project. Oh. If you can distinguish this name from that. No, I have this money. Can you go I... back one to the specification? Um, can you go back one slide? Oh, yeah. <coughs> how does the iterators, uh, uh, how do you find the iterators on the HTML? How does it work? 
because um, so I have um, I have this line that has the card header and then I have the card item. Oh, okay, Use, using the cards. Yeah. You can also use an ID inside of the dictionary. So, so basically we're looking for the, for the class and, and there we're going, we're going to iterate through them. Okay. Right. So, and, and you can possibly create like a, not work with a foolish smell but maybe just uh, pieces of it too as well and then put, put them together later, right? So you have like the one specification for, for like your menu and one specification for you could do such things, right? Yeah, that's what I'm using for my project. Yeah. So they have the HTML, a one main template, and then broken it down into components, like component for the menu, component yeah. for category list, yeah. component for group for whatever you have. And then I produce for each of them a specification file and a small HTML template. But it's also, of course, possible to have just a big HTML for everything and then put the things inside. Um, and I already thought about that because I have this main template. So I think in the end I have this main HTML template and have a, a different thing for the specification. This is like container. So I, this is the container on the left and container on the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then I use the container to put things into it. So, but I still have then the specification no. files for each component. No, okay. So it knows, a, it knows about classes and IDs. You could use either on the uh, script. No, no. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah, it works like it passes first specification files, so it knows the thing which it has to recognize and which classes they have, and then it passes the HTML template, and it connects the things, and the first step is to fill in the values and iterate all the list and so So it also helps if you are, um, if the HTML template doesn't have something, which is specified in the specification file, so you don't have to work on this. It's especially good if you have the database queries inside the iterator or something like that. I was just asking, in your iterator, your template had the class card. Could it be the ID card? Oh no, it's... Um, it has to be class? Uh, the iterator is fine in the list, in the, in the specification, in the list uh, thing, so... So do you have class equals card say, ID? Say list card. So that's their, yeah, oh, yeah, it's iterator card, it's in, in, in a second line. Right, but card is the class, is the container that has the items. Uh, no, card item. Card item. Card item. Card item. Card item is the class, is the HTML class, and the iterator name is card. If you go back one slide. Yeah, go back one. The iterator ID is going to be That's what I meant, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, if you, come forward. so if you did it on IDs instead of classes, you would pick it up? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So my next example is just a menu. They have the data, database table, the menu. They have the name, which is to up, up the URL and stuff like that. So in addition to having an iterator, I start off with uh, putting the things into the specification file, so you can attach a, a list to a table, and then say there are from which fields uh, um, the information comes. So like the label is in the field name of this table, the URL doesn't say that, so it uses the URL field. Uh, so this is a quick way to do this without an iterator. It of course uh, generates one internally. Yeah. And the template is really simple. It's just a HTML list. So in this case, in the script, I have first to uh, create a 
database object, I'm using the rows object mapper inside. But uh, it could work in our database thing. Just uh, have to write a little model that's just doing a few things. And then you then you pass in the database object to Tenetsu and that's the same process. The only difference is you are specifying uh, uh, the process. The process method uh, name is main, so it all, all, all only shows the database entry which have menu name like name. So this is a um, specification file's input. So you probably have uh, more than one, more than one menu in your page, like the top menu, footer menu. So you want to use the same template and specification for each of them. And then you have input. Say for the top menu, you have the menu any name top and footer. So you get the end result of about. Uh, you can use the same template, and if you use CSS, you can. Makes it look different. You can also easily say, I mean, the menu is the thing which is recognized by the specification file, but you can put any other class into it, so just for uh, just referring something in visualization. So, HTML, yeah. so you have maybe have for the top, you have menu class, top class, and footer menu. <laughs> so that makes it easy. Okay. So we have this script. And this is taken up also by an example. Okay. It's very basic as well. So you have the, the different things in menu. Okay, let's go on. So the iterators are really simple. If you want to have your own, you just have to support the next and count method. Whereas the next method gives, gives the next record and count as the number of records. And it has to be a hash as return value. So I have the field names to fill in. And there's also an easy way to create your own. There's a template zoom iterator class. And you just uh, create an object of it with a area of hash refs and you have your iterator that was used for this uh, card example. So it's pretty much easy. And now I think you often have uh, is a list of alternating rows. Which means you have one row in, in maybe a lighter color, the next row in a darker color, lighter color, darker, mm, so on. Uh, so you can uh, do this inside of template zoom with just putting two rows into uh, the HMN HM template and have different classes. So it says, ah, card item, I have a specification file, and odd, I don't know about it, and then I have card item even. So it does, not, does know it has an iterator word and uh, toggle the classes. So on the first one it's an odd and second even. And if this has more than two items, the third, the third one will again be odd. So it takes take this automatically, which is kind of neat. So uh, this alone does give you a lot. Um, if you, especially if things coming from the database, we will want to adjust it for, for the display. So like in the menu example, I have this UI here, and I can put this in the HTML, and here say it's target, target href, so instead of uh, replacing the text, it's replacing the href attribute. So it puts the URL there. But inside your uh, web application, uh, you might have uh, things like a session ID attached to the URL, things like that. 
So for inserting that, you can run a, a, a filter which just takes the URL and then generates your URL. Or also for the card example, we have, we have the price. You want to adjust it so it shows on the currency, like a dollar sign or something like that. So you can do all that by just having a function which is doing this manipulation of the URL or whatever you have, and put a filters hash ref uh, inside the, in the template zoom core. Okay. It's also good to have a kind of global filter where you can manipulate the complete record, change fields, whatever, and also you, are, you can return nothing from this filter which means uh, it leaves the record out. So like for a menu, if you have a login, in logout and some customer service or whatever, and you want only show uh, this one in which are, you know, uh, I mean, if you are logged in, you don't need a login link. And if you're not logged in, you don't have a customer service link. So this is uh, what I'm doing with the global filter. I just set checking the permission field in the menu table. To say okay, you have the proper right to do that. So I show the link. Yeah, the other stuff is like sorting, sorting a list. So it's especially if you are not using an iterator, but specifying the database stuff inside of the specification, the table and all that. You have a sort thing where you can say sort by date descending or code descending, whatever. Yeah. But I also have the thought with this. Um, I don't want to add too much in specification because if it grows too large, it's, it's, it becomes complicated. And I thought that most of things should be dealt in the creation of the iterator and things. So inside the code, but you can do that. That's a good thing. I start also with uh, translation, and this is not not really advanced right now. Um, it's pretty much simple function which gets the text inside the static HTML file and translate it. But it's a good start and. At one point, said, yeah. Only thing you have to do is write a simple function and create an i 18 object, and that is okay. And you can also do uh, if you don't want directly the text to translate it, but just have a key lookup. You can put this in the specification file, and it will translate to give this uh, key to your translating function. It's kind of good if you have really long text, and that's good. Okay. So I think we, we are using lots of course forms, so we have also forms inside the specification. It's basically like the form is named search, so it's related to the search class, and it says this and that fields. <laughs> and in the type your code, you can manipulate the forms before you call the process function. So you can uh, change form action, change the format from get to post or vice versa. Or you can also uh, fill form fields, just giving hash with the names. And it fills the form with the values. And the good thing with that is. You don't need to know the names of the HTML elements, like input, name, something. You just uh, address the specification names, the names. Search and search submit. So if in your HTML form it has a different name attribute, you don't have to change anything. Okay. So what I was starting with, like, about two months ago, a client came to me and he wanted to change to his uh, internal aliens in this shop because we were implementing a 
to do shipping thing for a different delivery company in Europe. And they gave us the uh, shipping labels as PDF documents. And then we started thinking how it, how we can do that. Because it's hard to, uh, if you, they, uh, let's say that they, they had this HTML page with the invoice, with the shipping label, and then they printed that. But it's hard to get this PDF stuff into an HTML thing. So we thought about how we can do that with uh, this project, and I thought, why we don't uh, use PDF invoices, but which is much nicer anyway. So we start with this PDF part of the uh, template soon. And it's basically doing the same HTML processing. And after that step, it does a PDF conversion. So it takes the HTML document, which is ready, and then converts it to PDF. Which is kind of tricky, because the number of approaches are also in CPAN. And it's kind of hard, especially if you're using PDF RP2, because it's not very well documented, and it's really bare bones. So I spent a lot of time. <laughs> uh, so I spent a lot of time with it, but I came up with, uh, with a free three way process. So first of all I take my HTML tree and then I calculate the dimensions of all the blocks inside of it. So um, if I have uh, no fixed size, I just take the text and go to the set PDF IP, and then we need, this gives me the, the, the width. Or I have blocks with a fixed width, I can read it from the CSS. And then I have a long document where I have all the calculation done. And the second step is to partition it. Partition means if, you are, if the HTML document would be bigger than one page in PDF. So it just moves the elements into the pages. And the final step is just rendered. It means I, I do the PDF commands to put the blocks in the PDF, to put the text, to put color, and all that. And uh, so I will get the size information from. Uh, this is, uh, I'm using CSS, so you can put an inline CSS in your HTML document and specify the sizes uh, because of uh, PDF works good with the point dimension. It's best put this into your uh, CSS and can translate into the sizes of the uh, inside of the PDF. Yeah. So what I would add to this is of course uh, reading CSS from a file because you can Put this into the HTML document, say where the CSS file is located. But just put it to be pretty interesting. So, the code is also pretty easy. After you have the normal process for the HTML template, you're creating a PDF object, information from the template from the Zoom, and the file, which is the output file and then you call a PDF process, that's it. And of course I talked about importing of the shipping label from a PDF file. You can also do that. You just say which file you want to import. The scaling factor, it turned out to be that the labels which come from the shipping company are bigger than the invoice could accommodate. So you can say it's the scaling factor and also shift the margin a little bit around and then you can just avoid it. Yeah. That's not really ready for production right now, but I'm getting pressure from my clients because you want to use this, so it won't be ready next week or two weeks or something like that. Okay. So the question is, where I was use this. My first use case was a, a procurement project where they um, procure books for American grants all over the world. 
and they some of them really were like two thousand books at the time, so they can stuff it their library. And then in the shopping cart we have a really long list. And in the interchange uh, tabel language, I think it's a bug. But it turned out to get really slow. If you have that much item, it was not the size or something. And yeah, I did this template zoom, it was very much faster. Because it just has a simple HTML template and then just running so the, the this spreadsheet has taken all that through. Yeah, also the shop backend. For my client in Florida, I did a product editor and product search on Placefink. And I also told you about PDF invoices. And my final goal is just to replace the current or complement the current template engine interchange with Tenbet Zoom. So the roadmap right now is very important to write documentation tests because there's none. So going on features, I want to like add like conditions. So things might appear in the page or not. Uh, for example, you might only show the card for, to the customer if there's something in it. It's kind of condition, and if it's condition is false, you want to drop the this part of the HTML tree. Also, if you're on the card page, you have or well, search a thing. You have empty lists, and you don't want to show an empty table with the headers, so just say, sorry, blah, blah. Isn't the filter part of it? Oh, actually, the filter will just take it out, right? But you wouldn't say either these or not. That's the difference. Yeah. So also things like selected items, where you highlight something. Um, yeah, paging and also trees. Should kind like a major iterator, but like a category with more hierarchy as well. So there's a lot of things to improve this. And, but because I'm using it in my project, I will certainly uh, develop it further. And this brings me to the end. The model is not available on CPAN yet. For two reasons. First of all, there's no documentation and testing. And I was tried, I tried to use Scylla, but again, I was, I was maybe just stupid or whatever. But it didn't work so easy. Maybe it can work tomorrow with Hackathon. But it says a JIT repository where you can get the code. And yeah, that's all about it. And if you have questions, just oh, First of all, I'd I like to say that this is a lot like the template, template system that I had in my mind that I never implemented. <laughs> so it, it looks pretty good. Uh, but have you, have you tried to compare to other systems, like how fast we'll do it? No, not yet. I mean, it's certainly not old. It doesn't yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, new project, right? So, yeah. and for them, again, good luck to somebody. But as I said, I'm using it in production, so it's not uh, not slow. Okay. But of course, it would be good to profile it and see where the weak spots are, and if it's in my my code or maybe fix in the tweak or whatever. Well, yeah, that would be good to have. Yeah, yeah. Should I should actually search some kind of trees for optimization for the two, because you have the specification by the parts and everything. I mean, the TT really it gets it and it executes it, and that's it. There's not much you can do with that. With this, you can sort of pre calculate an awful lot from the specification file and the, the HTML tree and have it produced already just to get the data in the fabric there. You can, even if you're slower at first, you can probably beat them. Yeah, there, there are more ideas about it, like keeping the stuff in memory if you yeah, exactly. do something that often. Parsing all the spec files and parsing all the HTML files in a process. And, you know, yeah. spawn it off from there, and you can save it. You copy on write, you pre compilation essentially. That's true. That's another point I want to investigate how much, how big is the footprint on memory, memory footprint on this stuff. Um, I mean, you alluded to the PDF stuff wasn't totally ready, but um, 
do you handle uh, looping? I had to do it. Yeah. I didn't quite understand whether that was possible. Like, the, like could you put the shopping cart into the PDF? Yeah. And how would you do that? Yeah, I mean, I. I. Maybe you all have been approached on the platform. This is a uh, red and uh, flash dot. So this is something that's describing. This works, I mean, because uh, of. Uh, oh, no, I think it's all the looping stuff and all that is handled in the. the, the HTML part okay, so you before I'm doing the conversion. So you do uh, make it render the HTML and, um, part first before you can generate the PDF? In, in That's why I have the well, HTML part first. Yeah, I'm able to So nobody's going to take me seriously. So that, again, seeing when I feel I'm just going to have to do it myself because nobody else will be fine. So, so this is an example of working on it. Big idea on the top is where the triple labels are supposed to go in. This works already, but it's, I didn't have a good example for that. And then you have a basic looping list of all the uh, things in your order. And I also tried to fit like uh, 100 items or something. And it does handle it pretty well, but it's, that is slowing it down. And it automatically pages to the next one. Yeah. And what, what is the PDF template itself look like? Okay. Thank you. The, what, the PDF input. It's a. Uh, Sorry, uh, nothing when you, when you, when you input the. Uh, um, you know, so this is the output of the script. What, what is the input? Oh, it's the HTML. The same as the HTML. Oh, it's HTML. It's, uh, it's the only thing on top is uh, we have a. Uh, probably want to have a specific uh, CSS word. Right, so, you, so you're basically rendering the HTML into the PDF. Yeah, I mean, you could use it uh, uh, for some static HTML files. Okay. Just throw it to the father and it will be okay. So, yeah, I, I use this like a ton of things, so it's. You know, I have this is okay, doing this partitioning. But I know there are big spots on it. And I mean, if you are. I'm no pretty sure if you're doing for something else, yeah. you'll come up with something yeah. which is not working as well. Yeah, we, we, do, we do a lot of reports for uh, generation. So, you know, every time they want to see the bar graphs on the HTML, they want downloadable bitmaps for their uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation, they want PDFs that they can print. Yeah, I think it's nice and useful because I mean you probably can just like fix invoices and reports. It's good to have it in HTML and you can adjust it through the CSS. I don't see a weak spot in this. So it's also good if you, I mean, uh, you can use HTML template, and then the customer or something, and you produce a receipt on the web page in HTML. You do the same thing for the PDF, and should be uh, look like pretty much the same, which is a good thing, I guess. Okay. Any more questions? And the mobile platform, the label, you're also an Okay, thank you for. Uh...